something for you. Well, don't keep me in suspense. What is it? I hope you like it. Oh, it's beautiful. What's the occasion? No occasion, darling. I, I just wanted you to have it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You'd better get dressed for dinner, Jeff. The Van Aldens will be here in about an hour. All right, Laura. Jeff, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Oh, not right now, Dory. I've got to dress for dinner. Jeff, I'm giving you final warning. Either you stay away from Aunt Laura, or... Uh, or what? Or I'm going to the police. <laughs> I wouldn't press so hard if I were you, doll. Or I'll spoil that pretty little face of yours. <laughs> New Blue Cheer, the product that washes better because it washes whiter. So much whiter, you can actually see the difference. Presents The Lineup. At the Broadway show, The Music Man, the head wardrobe mistress is Bessie McMahon. She's mighty particular about the way her costumes look, especially the white things. So we asked Mrs. McMahon to witness a test which we trust will prove new blue cheer washes so white you can see the difference. Using two petticoats from the show, we wash one in a leading product, the other in new blue cheer with its improved blue magic whitener. Now, Mrs. McMahon, here are the two pieces which you brought us. They've each been freshly laundered, and I'd like you to look them over very carefully and tell me which one looks better. Well, I this one. This one right here. Why does it look better, Mrs. McMahon? Well, it looks so much whiter than the other one. It's so much mm -hmm. whiter. Let me show you something. This is the petticoat which was washed in new blue cheer. And I thank you very much. Ladies, when the white things in your wash are that white, you just know your whole wash is perfect. So, try new blue cheer and see the difference in whiteness yourself. <laughs> Ben, there's a young lady outside I think you ought to talk to. Her name's Dory Sims. What's on her mind? Well, it's her aunt, a wealthy widow, Mrs. Laura Courtney. Seems to think her aunt's being victimized by a sharp con man that's passing himself off as a socialite. Okay, have her come in. Miss Sims, please. How do you do, Miss Sims? I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Inspector Grant. How do you do? Hello. Inspector Asher tells us you think your aunt is in some sort of trouble? Yes, as a matter of fact, I know she is. Who's the man involved, Miss Sims? His name is Jeff Clarkson. Among the social set, he's known as a professional guest. Do you mind explaining? Well, I guess I should start by explaining about Aunt Laura. She's suffering from an illness that a lot of middle-aged women go through. Fear of getting old. Jeff is 15 years younger than she is, very handsome. And Laura thinks that she's in love with him. Well, I'm afraid that's not against the law. I'm quite aware of that, Lieutenant. Sorry, go on. Well, he's got her wrapped around his little finger. She gives him money to live on, pays all his bills, and she's turned over $50,000 to him. What was her reason for turning over the money? Well, Jeff said he was going to invest it for her. Has he made the investments? No. He's had the money for over two months, so I had a private investigator check on him. The money is in his personal bank account. Have you told your aunt about this? No. Oh, I've tried to explain about Jeff to her, but she just refuses to listen. Where can we find Clarkson? He has a room at the Cherry Valley Country Club. You can usually find him on the golf course or at the bar. Can you tell us anything else about him? He's from Chicago, been here about six months. Well, here, here's the private investigator's report on him. Along with the description, my address is on the envelope in case you want to contact me. Well, there's not much we can do, Miss Sims, if Clarkson has not broken the law. But I know he's out to swindle my aunt. Well, thank you, Miss Sims. We'll be in touch with you. Thank you, Lieutenant.
We'll have Fred check out this investigator's report and run Clarkson through the bureau. Also contact the Chicago police and find out he's got a record. Let's go to the club and talk to Clarkson. <laughs> said we'd find a Jeff Clarkson out here. You Mr. Clarkson? Yeah. Been having a lot of trouble with this little monster. I three-potted four greens yesterday. What can I do for you? The police officers like to ask you a few questions. Oh? Now, you know, I've always known it was a crime to three-pot a green, but I didn't think it was a police matter. What's your occupation, Clarkson? Well, I'll tell you. I'm a gambler. I took $4.80 away from the boys on this course last week. Will you answer the question? No. No, I'm not answering any questions. Now, what's the pitch? You boys selling raffle tickets? Well, I'll tell you what, you leave a dozen with a bartender in there and tell them to put it on my account, huh? Yes. Hello, Laura, honey. Time for my golf lesson. In a minute, darling. I'd like you to meet these gentlemen. They're from police headquarters. Police. Oh, it's just a routine investigation of some kind. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Laura. Laura Clarkson. My wife. Are you the former Mrs. Laura Courtney? That's right. Now Clarkson. We were married in Las Vegas several days ago. Any other questions, gentlemen? No, that'll be all. boys work fast. Did you arrest him? I'm afraid we can't, Miss Sims. Clarkson was one jump ahead of us. I don't understand. He married your aunt in Las Vegas. You mean you're going to let him get away with this? Well, legally, there isn't anything we can do now that they're married. Well, that's ridiculous. He's out to swindle her, and you know it. Well, that may be so, but for the present, we can't take any action. We'll keep a good check on him, though. Well, don't bother. I'll take care of it myself. <laughs> Macon Clarkson has two priors in Chicago. Suspicion of embezzlement and robbery released on both counts, lack of evidence. If it's what the Sims girl gave us, likes to work the country club set. Pretty slim chance of making anything stick with this character, especially now that his financial worries are over. Lieutenant Guthrie. Where? We'll be right out. Clarkson wasn't as smart as he thought. Prowl car just found him out at Lake Merced. He's dead. <laughs> Looks like he's been dead about six hours, shot under the left ear. Anyone in the area report hearing the shot? No, and we can't seem to find any other clues either. There's no gun. The car's registered to the victim. What about Mrs. Clarkson? She was notified right after the prowl car found the body. She said she was in her suite at the country club all night, knew nothing about it. Pretty shaken up. The doctor ordered her to bed. We'll go and talk to her. Right. <laughs> Is it? 
Police officers like to talk to Mrs. Clarkson. She's resting quietly now. The doctor gave her a sedative. I'm sorry, this is urgent. Don't you policemen observe any common courtesies? I might ask the same thing of you. There are two men here from the police. I told them you were rescued. Have them come in. I still can't believe it. Jeff was so full of lying. Were you with your husband last night, Mrs. Clarkson? Just for dinner. Here at the club. And where did you go after dinner? I went straight to my room. We've been out quite a bit lately. I was exhausted and took a sleeping pill. I didn't know anything until the police notified me. Did your husband join you? No. He stayed down at the bar with my niece, Dory Sims. And you didn't see him again? I suppose it seems strange since we were practically on our honeymoon, but Jeff had a good reason for staying with Dory. What was the reason? He wanted to have a talk with her. She was very bitter about our marriage. And Jeff wanted to try to make Dory understand that he wasn't just another fortune hunter. He was very understanding with her. I must admit I wasn't. She was nothing but a jealous, vicious cat. Why do you think so, Miss Clark? I met Jeff through Dory. They were an item before I came into the picture. They've been going together for about six months. Is there any other information you can give us? Yes. I checked with the bartender and the parking lot attendant that were on duty last night. Jeff left the club about 11 last night to drive Dory to her house. We'll have to ask you not to leave town for a while, Mrs. Clarkson. We possibly want to ask you some other questions later. You better pick up this Dory Sims. You have to do it. You're so wonderful to me. Well, day is done, and Dad's done in. What a rough one. Now for him, an ivory bath. Pure pleasure. Look, he relaxes, and well he might. Why, Ivory floats, stays right in sight. Twins, too, had troubles, scrapped all day. Now they're content. They love to play in Ivory suds. Sure, suds galore. It lathers fast. This soap gives more. Poor Mom. Her problems came in pairs. Now she'll relax, forget her cares, in ivory suds, she's soothed again. They're mild enough for baby's skin. Why, one can almost hear her say, a perfect way to end the day. An ivory bath is pure pleasure. <laughs> Sims at home? No, sir. She just left. You know where she was going? She's going to be out of town for a while. Pack her suitcase in an awful hurry. What direction did you take? Toward a presidio.
Take her car ahead. I didn't kill him. You've got to believe me. I didn't kill him. Why are you trying to leave town in such a hurry? Well, I read about it in the morning paper. It looked bad for me. I panicked. I didn't think. I understand think. you saw Clarkson about 11 o'clock last night. Yes, but he took me straight home and dropped me off. Believe me, that's Anyone see you arrive at home? No, they were all asleep. Well, I have to go to jail. We'll talk about that later. I'll drive you down to the Hall of Justice, and we'll see if we can get some answers. Is that the doll that killed Jeff Clarkson? Would you please tell us what you want? Yeah. I'd like to pin a medal on her. Who are you, miss? Name's Sookie. Sookie Larkin. My stage name, anyhow. And what's your legal name? Clarks. Mrs. Jeff Clarks. That guy was my husband. Where do you live, Mrs. Clarkson? In Chicago. Just arrived by plane about an hour ago. What's your reason for coming to San Francisco? See if I couldn't get some money out of this. I figure I'm entitled to it. He hasn't supported me in over a year. Did you know that he was married to Laura Courtney? Mm, sure, he made the society pages in all the Chicago papers. Did you contact Clarkson when you found out? Called him in Vegas right after I read it. How do you react to this? Mm. First, he tried to fluff me off. When he realized I could make trouble for him, why, he said he'd get back to me and we'd settle it. Did he contact you? Nah. Gave him a few days. He didn't call. What did you do then? Called him again. At the country club. When was that? About 10 o'clock the night he was murdered. Oh, uh -huh. did you talk to him? No. I talked to his, um, his wife. She said he wasn't in. I figured it was some doll. He didn't stay put very long. What was the extent of your conversation with her? I asked if he was in, and she got a little huffy and told me not to call back. So I got hacked and I spilled the beans. I told her the whole thing. She hung up on me. Well, where will you be staying while in San Francisco? The Regent Hotel. And I'm getting an attorney. I figure I got a little dough coming to me. We better check her story with the airlines and see if there's a record of the marriage in Chicago. Let's pick up Laura Clarkson. I'm sorry, I didn't see that woman go in your office. How could you miss her? Guess it was pretty well wrapped up in this. Coroner's report on Clarkson. Died of a bullet wound in the skull, 38. What time was it that? Sometime between midnight and three in the morning. The bullet entered the left side of the skull. Powder burns in the hair indicate the gun was fired at close range. Could have been fired from the back seat. Oh, and another thing. We checked the Sims girl out to see if she had a 38 registered. Did she? No, but Laura Clarkson did. We picked the gun up in her suite. Ballistics is checking it now. Three empty shells in it. <laughs> Now, let's go over this again, Mrs. Clarkson. You say your revolver has not been out of the safe for weeks. That's right. It has three bullets out of it, and the gun was fired recently. Oh, I forgot. Jeff had it out in the woods shooting rabbits about a week ago. What about that phone call, Mrs. Clarkson? Do you deny that? No. I guess it was my pride. I'll be truthful with you now, Inspector. I was angry and upset enough to kill Jeff when I found out he was married. But I didn't. What did you do after the phone call? Oh, I was upset. I sent for Miss Babcock. She was with me all night. What time did you arrive? About 10.30. After you received this phone call from Mrs. Clarkson, why didn't you go down to the bar and tell him about it? I just couldn't face Jeff. I was so 
You realize how humiliating a thing like this can be? Hello? Oh, just a minute. It's for you. Guthrie. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Fred. Well, they have the ballistics report. It's not the same gun Clarkson was killed with. I told you that. Now, will you please leave? We need our rest. We'd like you to come along with us, if you don't mind, and talk some more about this. Am I being arrested? We're going to need your help. You will cooperate, won't you? Well, here's a report from Chicago on Silky Clarkson. She was married to him, all right, a year ago last April. No record of divorce. What about the airlines? Did you check her arrival time? Yes, she arrived in town about an hour before she came in here. Lieutenant Guthrie. I see. All right, then, we'll meet you here, room 417D. Some airline stewardess claims she knows something about the Clarkson murder. Gonna be here in a half an hour. This is Miss Doyle. We appreciate your coming down, Miss Doyle. Look at down. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Inspector Grimm. Thank you. And what is this information you have on the Clarkson murder? Well, you see, I'm assigned the Chicago-San Francisco flight. I've been on it over a year now. Fly back and forth twice a week. And you just arrived in from Chicago? Yes, that's right. Yesterday I saw a picture of a woman involved in the Clarkson case in the Chicago papers. I think it was the same woman I had on a flight recently. What was the name of this woman? The first Mrs. Clarkson. The one that was married to him in Chicago. Suki Clarkson? Yes. At least I think so. Was this an arrival flight from Chicago a few days ago? No, it was a departure flight from San Francisco. When was that? Just 10 days ago. An early flight leaving San Francisco. Let's see. A week ago Wednesday? Yes. Are you positive? Oh, yes. I checked back on the passenger list and the flight log. What was the name this woman was traveling under? Well, it wasn't the same. That's why I'm not sure. It was Franklin. Mrs. Alfred Franklin. Now, do you think you could identify her as Sookie Clarkson if you saw her again? Yes. At least I think so. We'd like you to look at some women in the lineup. See if you could possibly identify one of them as the woman who was with you on that flight. Well, certainly. If you think it would help. Have any time, miss? Yeah. Once in Sheboygan, when I was a coach dancer in a carny, I belted a guy for getting fresh. He turned out to be the sheriff. How long have you been in town? Long enough to know that I can slap a liable suit on you bullies. It'll reduce you to janitors in the city jail. What's your reason That's the for one telling you, Sam? Are you positive? I, couldn't get I know that voice anywhere. I what about the face? He I'm positive. Been over a year. Listen, you've got no right to hold me in here on a murder. All right, Matt, you can hold the rest of the line. We have a positive identification. What are you talking about? Where were you the night Clarkson was killed? Oh, come on now, will you? Let's not start this jazz all over again. Where were you? In Chicago. You checked the airlines. I arrived here three days after he was knocked off. You were in San Francisco the night he was killed. Oh, come on, Cal. Don't bait me. No. You do hit for that. We have a witness who can identify you as a passenger on a flight from San Francisco to Chicago at 6.30 a.m. the day your husband was killed. You tell your prize witness he's off his go. I was in Chicago. When you called Laura Courtney, where was it from? In Chicago. I called from my apartment. We checked the phone company back there. There's no record of any call from your apartment on that date. Oh, maybe I used a booth. I don't remember. Would you step up here, Miss Doyle, please? Do you recognize this lady? No. I never saw her before. This is Miss Doyle. She was your stewardess on that flight to Chicago. She's lying. You've been lying to us long enough. No part of your story jibes, Mrs. Clarkson. You were in this town before your husband's death. You called him at the club. You found he wasn't in his room. And I suppose you're going to tell me now that I got in the car beside Miss Blueblood here and she never even noticed me, No, huh? you hid in the back seat before they got in. When she got out, you killed him and then took that flight back to Chicago in the morning. Dirty bunch of crumbs. 
You'd rather I took the rap than these snooty broads, wouldn't you? Did you kill him, Mrs. Clarkson? I do these two stuck-up society nothings a big favor. I rid them of the lowest bum on earth, and I gotta pay for it. You get yours one of these days. Some other shop here come along and, and hook you all over again. Because your kind's always got to have a, a young rah-rah boy to hang on your seedy arms. All right, let's go. <laughs> the button and green goes right on the brush. Let me try it. Gee, it's fast. Watch, Mom, how easy it is. So neat, too. Yes, and most important, Gleam in the brand new easy-to-store push-button pack contains the famous Gleam formula. Just like in the tube, the same fresh taste, same exclusive GL70. It's Gleam, the toothpaste for people who can't brush after every meal. You see, the food you eat combines with mouth bacteria, causes both decay and mouth odor. But one gleam brushing before breakfast destroys most bacteria. Yes, one gleam brushing destroys decay bacteria, and for most people, stops mouth odor all day. So if you can't brush after meals, even though it's best, get gleam in the familiar tube or new push-button pack. Gleam for people who can't brush after every meal. <laughs> Got a complete statement from Sookie Clarkson. Looks like she's in for a fast conviction. I'm glad it's over with. Too many women. Let's hope our next draw will be on a good, healthy ex-con. You don't like working with women? Not me, it's my wife. All those pretty gals involved. She thinks we planned it that way. <laughs> has been brought to you from San Francisco by Gleam. Now in tubes, a new push-button pack. The toothpaste for people who can't brush after every meal. The lineup is produced by Jaime Del Valle with the cooperation of the San Francisco Police Department. We are grateful to the chief of police and the men in his organization who have contributed their time and effort to make this program possible.